um, on some pretty dramatic notes. Um, this is episode 24, the beginning of book two of the Age of Ashes campaign, Pathfinder second edition. Um, I want to introduce our cast, then our sponsors, um, and then we'll go into uh, sort of our downtime and, and uh, a recap of everything that we've done in the last six months or so. So let's start with our cast, uh, Spence. Hi, I'm Spence and I know how to use a mute button. I live here. Um, I am here playing Modica Freerunner. Um, oh, no, I'm not. I'm not anymore. Ugh. Ugh, I'm killing myself from the get-go. I'm playing Aldonis, a warg who uh, has been blessed by the goddess Lamash too and has lost just about everything he holds dear uh, in in this last battle. So he's got to deal with some stuff. And uh, yeah. Mr. Smith. Hello, I'm Mr. Smith. I play Rune Ravenswood. Um, bit of a broken wizard right now. We'll see how it goes. Oh, tonight's drink, however, uh, a bit hopeful. Uh, strawberry lemonade whiskey mix. Two ounces of your favorite whiskey, one quarter ounce of simple syrup, uh, three quarter ounces of lemonade, and some muddled strawberries. Highly recommended. Delicious. Alex? Hey, everyone. I'm Alex. Thank you so much for coming back. Um, watch this awesome Pathfinder game. Um, I play the director, a gnome bard, who is just getting back from the horribleness of war that he has absolutely experienced and that he was absolutely on the front line for and uh he is very anxious to write about it and set the history straight so looking forward to it yep wonderful daniel hi i'm daniel um i play salix lavendil the crestfallen uh who just got to be the general and leave hundreds of people to their deaths uh, two of his really close friends are now dead, and um, he's dealing with that while having a breakdown, being comforted by his favorite wizard. So let's do this. I, yes, I couldn't have put it better myself. Uh, I'm Ian. I'll be the GM tonight. We are sponsored by Smiteworks. Smiteworks, as you might know by now, um, they have created Fantasy Grounds and Fantasy Grounds Unity. We're using Unity tonight, so everything that you see, aside from our chat windows, that's all being managed on Fantasy Grounds Unity. I highly recommend if you are interested in virtual tabletops to check them out. Go to fantasygrounds.com. Also, shout out to the Only Sheet. They are excellent if you're trying to manage or create or theory craft a group. Um, it runs on Excel if you have Microsoft Office or just Excel, um, but it's super inexpensive and you can use it from level one all the way to level 20 and it manages, I think, up to a whole group. Um, I know our wizard Rune uses it. So go to theonlysheet.com to check it out. Uh, this music is by Rock Narden. You can check him out on YouTube and Spotify. Um, and our ambient tracks for the background noise is by Michael Gelfi. You can also check him out on YouTube and Spotify. Um, how about Salix? How about you tell us where we left off? Oh, no. <laughs> um, so left off. Uh with Felix and Rune had went to uh, where Monica's ashes were in a pile on the battlefield. Um, Felix uh, was having trouble coping with everything that had happened and Rune was comforting him when we had last seen them. Um, as far as the director and everybody else, uh, I'm not really sure what was the director doing during like while, when everybody like kind of ran off in different directions. Um, <laughs> that's a very uh, good question. Yeah, that is. Um, well, immediately after the uh, the fighting stopped and that it had been you know decided that it could be seen that they were the victors and all the calamity happened. Um, he he initially uh, started writing. He started he pulled out his uh, trusty note, leather bound note 
book and uh, started writing because uh, the tale, it was fresh in his mind and he had a lot to get down. So <laughs> I do kind of imagine him going through like, you know, the, like the bodies and like the, you know, people that are still maybe partially not quite dead. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 no, no, this is exactly how horrible I thought it was going to be. Okay, yeah, and as he, as he writes this, as he goes through the battlefield. Um, while people have their emotional, <laughs> their emotional moments, this is what he's doing. <laughs> Rune? Mute is a professional move. Um, <laughs> so uh, Rune, um, traveling with uh, Salix as uh, they departed the battlefield, he did leave one mark um, where uh, Madoka's ashes for all intents and purposes lay uh as he was getting up uh walking away with um with salix he instilled a permanent um sigil uh of ravenswood uh, upon the ashes um mm. according to the cantrip spell sigil it will be there forever and it will remain visible. Wow. Um, and you have this amulet now. This amulet you you found. What does Aldana say? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it. yeah, the next thing the next thing he does is uh, he turns to Salix. My friend, I have a I have a favor to ask. What's that? I made a promise to uh, attend trial at Kentargo, and I need you to hold on to this as he hands you the necklace. Oh, uh, Salix will take it. He's like, oh, I guess I'll be needing this to get Will back home anyway. But I'll hold on to it, but... uh plan on coming with you, so hopefully Deidre can hold off on leaving until I get back. I I'm actually, yeah. I don't think Diedrich's still here. Wasn't he the one after you, though? Well, his uh, compatriots still are, but um, given what arrived, I think it was a uh, I think Ozre called a lot of people to his side when he decided to arrive. All right. Uh, martyrs and all that. Sacrifices are true. often made. I think, oh. I think I remember him doing something afterwards, like explaining what, what Rika did. Or do you remember his 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 corpse? Um, a weird memory, uh, one you feel betrays you. But nevertheless, you look up and um, standing on the tower, the the arena that is um, where the last stand was held, the trunk, um, the, the broken stump of this massive tree, the figure of the man in Golem's armor. He stands atop it, looking down t towards you. Oh, I could always hope then. Oh, well. <laughs> Sal Salix will laugh and just kind of pat him on the back. He's like, well, I mean, if he wasn't here, I'd say we could just kill everybody else and just go home, but and not, not, not with him around. No, not so much. No. Damn it. Moments later, he'll, he'll arrive to speak with you. Um, Madoka, you've seen a lot today, um, more than you thought you would, but you're still probably quite confused. This dragon and this prison, this ambiguous situation, um, doesn't make any more sense now, despite everything that you've seen. 
perhaps you were in this battle and you died and this maybe is a memory um, and you're about to um, be, be eaten and recycled away, but um, your soul doesn't feel that. It's just something different. And the dragon Kyrian invites you to stick around and watch. He seems eerily patient as he's chained to the, to the bed there. The lava below him doesn't seem threatening anymore. So, wait. Have you always been here? Look up, Monica. I've given you plenty of clues. Piece them together. <sighs> I was never good at riddles. I was good at, like, doing other things. <sighs> I know. Yeah, thanks. Fucking dragons. Um, okay, so. So. Okay. So we're inside the necklace, obviously. Because, right. yeah. Okay. So now Salix is wearing the necklace, I think. Rune is. Oh, Rune is. Okay. I thought Rune gave the necklace to Salix. Did he give it to Salix? Yeah. yeah. Salix is. <laughs> okay. So Salix is wearing it. Are we able to control this thing? Because, like, I know I now, saw kind of like a thing. What? I, I thought you'd never ask. Try it. Where do you want to go, Monica? Uh, Tired of steering the ship. I want to, like, pull down to the ground. Okay. It's and gonna take some skill. Okay, sure. I did not think I was gonna need my character. Just team. roll a twenty-sided die for me. All right, cool. In the tower. Yeah. It wiggles a bit. No, not like that. You, I'll show you. Okay, can you like pull it down? As I want, I want them to know we're still here, or I'm still here. You speak in a common tongue, even in Draconic. It's strange. <sighs> you have to change the way you think, Monica. Those words I... don't mean anything here. Think in Draconic. Okay. Going backwards. He's going to dig his hands into the slab that he's chained to. Um, it feels more like a bed now or a nest, you realize. Mm -hmm. He's been here for a long time. And he closes his eyes, twisting his face. The, the, the small-ish red dragon um, shakes a bit. Salix. Yeah. Feel, feel a weight on your neck. You probably chalk it up to the amulet seeming heavier than it is, but um, you can make a perception check if you'd like. It just seems like a, a heavy piece. You haven't worn it long enough to notice anything wrong. Rune, you can make the check as well. Now do it again. Okay. I think, uh, I think down in draconic heavy ground mm. I, I, I think in draconic I want to write a message on the ground with the amulet Carrion's gonna move closer to you stop thinking about what you want to do and start thinking about why I want to be free. We need to be free. Hmm. Salix, the necklace snaps off your neck and falls to the ground. Hey, Just with, uh, the, with a yank. You would you would think maybe mage hand, something like that. But you know you know better than that. Actually, you're just gonna stare at it. 
Rune, you know exactly what's going on. You knew it just before it, before it even snapped off. The amulet is uh, animated once again. He looks at, um, he looks up to um, Diedrich. Could you, uh, could you give me a moment, please? Take your time. Thank you. Is there, goes down to- is there a very short draconic word for dumbass? Rune. Yeah. So I will, that, that is the image that I am conjuring in my mind that I want to write there you in go. my ashes. Oh. I see my name. I'm going to need a check um, okay. from Modica. Okay. It can be dexterity or it can be sleight of hand. Let me open up uh, this. And... Hmm. So stealth, would that be sleight of hand? Or is that yeah. deception? Uh, no, it's based on stealth. It'd be thievery. Okay. Or Oh, no, it's based on thievery. Okay, that's fine. Into the tower it goes. Oh. Praying to God. <laughs> Salix, maybe before you reach for it, it slides again. Uh, you knew this thing had a lot of energy when it would when it would move. Um, it, it would take effort for Reka or Monica to, to hold it with these amulets in place as they're being tugged on. Um, so this thing just starts darting around. Um, uh, it's seemingly at random at first, but then suddenly it starts to spell out something. You know what? That's it. It's fucking cursed. We just we bury it here. And <laughs> we, we burn it. it. <laughs> we, we leave it here. We plant a damn tree over top of it, and we just go home. You get a trowel. I gotta take a pissy brother home. We got shit to do, man. What kind of cursed item knows the name of its previous owner? Maybe that's your first thought, because this thing certainly does. It says Modica, written in ashes. Um, that's sacrilegious probably offensive right now um, in this moment, especially now you're only just started to mourn the loss of your friend in this amulet. Um, can't get over her either. Still here. I am still here. Felix is going to look at Rune with his hand and like, what? What are we doing? Rune is in full squinty face mode. Trying to yeah. trying to work through the logic of what is what he's seeing. He is it mm. is it some echo of Madoka that's left behind? Is it was the the necklace intelligent to begin with and remembers her? I don't I can't figure out. Monica, yeah. the room was lit, once lit by this lava, seems to fade. Mm-hmm. It gets dimmer, and it darkens. Suddenly, you can't see much. You can't even see outside. It's almost as if what you can see is, is backlit by, by the, the pools of fiery hot liquid metal. Um, and Kyrian says, now, you're going to be quite tired. <sighs> I never could move that much. You're not as strong as me, not yet. You're going to need to give it time. Good night. And the lava turns to obsidian. Everything fades to black. Um, and you're granted not even another thought yet. <laughs> the amulet stops moving. So Alex is going to bend over and gingerly like, kind of pick it up by a thing like, Hold it in front of Rune. He's like, you know, I'm going to hold on to this. If it starts flying around again, I'm putting it in the trash. Yeah, don't do that. It was Monica's after all. And then I'll put it in a bowl of soup. That's fair. We'll put it in his pocket, and he's like, that last thing I need to do is to yank me out of the sky while I'm trying to fly somewhere. I mean, if you're going to let the necklace yank you out of the sky, you've got bigger problems. Uh, they're new. And he kind of like fluffs his wings out. He's like, I don't know what they can do. But 
Yeah. Wings, huh? Yeah. They're new to yeah. me, too. Welcome to the Fly Club. Uh -oh. I'm down. <laughs> uh, Rune looks back towards um, Diedrich. All right, I, th I think I'm ready to be taken off to jail now. We have quite a journey. You notice um, you've realized something about Diedrich. He's always seemed pale to you. This time he's even paler. Um, Maybe, maybe you've never seen him blink um, from the perspective of, of being a disciplined warrior. Um, now it seems something a little bit more ominous. Uh, he carries weight from what just happened. You all do, but this is a little bit different for him. You notice the sea elves are forming again. They're preparing. Diedrich says to you, we have quite a journey. Yeah, we do. I don't so want you to right, detain Diedrich. you. I'm fine. Uh, I'm. All right. I'm coming with with Rune. That's not up for debate. What I would Very like well. to ask, they have to take my brother back home. It'll take a little bit, but I figure packing up, burying her dead, looking after her wounded might take a little bit longer. Or give me time to get him home and get back. Would that be acceptable? Very well. I see you've met the elephant people. And he looks around. Um, some of them oh, actually yeah, have that game. He's, he's good people. When they fled their home from the center clause, we found them. A great coincidence. But I advise you to travel with them. They're allies of ours, as well as yours. It's that first sense of trust. They can report to me if anything happens to you. I'll give you a week's time, and we sail. Uh, I'll be back as soon as possible. Very well. So it looks will kind of walk off after kind of patting Rune on the shoulder. Probably a little too hard. <laughs> We're taking off. Mm. Rune. I want you to understand. Yeah. What lies within you has betrayed me a hundred times. Fair deals, even. He's a master of deceit. When you prepare your spells, I'd like to know what you do. When I prepare, or what spells I'm preparing? Yes. <laughs> Touche. Anything's All right, then. out of line, I have to detain you again. I don't wish to do that. That's fair. Beyond that, I'll give you time to grieve, prepare, feast. We can head out tomorrow. Very kind of you. Thank you. Of course. We are going to set camp by the river if you need us. All right, then. See you there. He, he leans to a sea elf. Watch him. Um, and they head out. Director, what are you doing? So the director is is uh, writing down, you know, all this, and he's kind of, you know, saying to himself, uh, you know, gore, viscera, uh, a sea of destruction spreads out and far. God, no, that's horrible. That's cliche, derivative, dambuge, <laughs> death's attention left none. Uh, now, God, oh, wait, no, oh, 23 and 24. Good eye, good eye, good eye. As he picks up small metallic looking things and sticks them in a bag. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and continues to go back to writing every now and again and, um, until until like he at some point he will look up and and see that Rune is talking with it's like oh crap I got I got I got to get over there um, all right let's go let's go and he'll kind of like help or get on Dembugi because Dembugi's a lot bigger and he can get over all these bodies because I imagine there's just a lot of bodies yeah 
There's a bit. And like, yeah, and like he's he's very small. So he would at some point towards the end of that conversation kind of, you know, saddle on up to bit. But he would constantly be like, oh, wait, no, pick that up, pick that up, pick that up. 35, 35, 35, 36. And okay, okay, back in the bag um, <laughs> as he makes his way to Rune. <laughs> I love it. Caltrip's coming back. <laughs> 50 out of 500. <laughs> what's important right Aldonis do you have any more business with this very well so the next couple of days are about cleaning this up get everybody's story um, and trying to save people who are um, on the brink of death uh, you've count your losses Aldonis will use uh, as many vital beacons as he can just to like help with the healing process. Excellent. Now that he knows he can do it and he's a good yeah. boy. You've noticed um, what remains of Bedariel has calcified in a way. Something something seems holy about the site. What was intended to be a city now feels like a shrine or a monument of, of its death. Um, and they've begun to use it for magic, healing magic. Mostly rainwater has collected. It's formed a sort of a pond in the center of this, what is shaped like a natural coliseum um, at this massive tree stump. Has anybody traveled with Salix to visit Breach Hill? No, just me. Uh, before I go, um, I would have spent like a good, like we would have left probably the next day um, sleeping, of course, after the battle. Um, but Salix would have spent a good portion of the uh, rest of the day looking through Bedario uh, for something that reminds him, or to keep, like, a keepsake to keep uh, on him, to, like, remind him of Reka. Hmm. Yeah. A chip if, um, if the sea elves allow, Rune will go with him. They'll let you. All right. We, if, if Rune is going, then the director will go. <laughs> we all end up. So like she looks at the, the director. You didn't even want to come. No, I did not. But if Rune's going, then I'm going. Um, Aldonis will stay uh, just because, you know, he's like, feels like he's, he'll be useful here. So. Um, Rune will. Seeing that uh, Aldonis is staying, uh, Rune will pop over to him. Um, I have to talk to uh, Salix about Kellen. It's the only reason I'm going. Will you be all right here? Elves are friends. We'll be fine. All right. Come back. You have my word. Okay. All right. Let's be on our way. I'll be back, Dembuge. I'll say goodbye. Another, not, not, I'll see you later in a little bit. I love you. Yeah, you will be back. <laughs> oh. Damn straight. Aldonis and Dembuge have separate adventures, and it's, it's <laughs> yes. the wolf and the elephant. <laughs> yes. I'm here for that. I'm here for that. I stand with it. That's that's a separate that's a separate um, game altogether. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you arrive at Breach Hill days later. Um, it's just as you remember it. It's probably home for you, Salix. Um, where's the first place you visit? Um, he would like so the the trip over there. He would kind of kind of have babied Will like almost overly so like even though yeah. he he knows Will is a grown man he kind of like overly doted on him on that trip like oh you need water and he's like here's water you need food here's your food like your bed is made your tent is ready I took the down this morning you know just the mm. whole way without being asked um but after getting there, he would make sure that Will is set in um, at his house or the, the barracks where he stays. 
Yeah. Um, before he says, Rune, Rune has information on on where Kellen is. Rune. Yeah. Where is he? I wanted to let everybody mourn for a little while before I pressed issues. He could be in danger. <sighs> Look, do you think the thought hasn't crossed my head, Will? But a promise is a promise, and that was the last one. So you stay here and take care of your city. What happens if something happens on the ship? They leave me in the dark. I should know where he is. You can't go on what ifs, Will. What if our aunt had balls? She'd be our uncle. I don't know how to respond to you sometimes, brother. But if you die, what am I supposed to do? If you go missing, who do I even search for? Well, here. If I'm not back in... If I'm not back in two years. Two years, it's a blink of an eye for us. You know that. Then you make a headstone for me and Kellen out front, and you live your life like we died. You don't look, you don't avenge, you don't do anything. That, that part of your life is over, Will. And he'll ruffle his hair, and he's like, your big brother's got that part handled. Great. Two years. Two years. I'll be back. Luck's gonna run out one day, brother. I've died twice already. What's a third? I'm just kind of like, I guess, knock like on the like with his the the hand that could emit sound. Like I was just kind of like knock on the the door frame, like with like a crack of thunder. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Rune, where do you go first? Well, uh, he pretty much follows Salix at a respectful distance, really. Right. Um, so not Salix looking to make any connections before he has to disappear for a bit. Yeah, that's fair. Um, yet, uh, Cadence Keg probably beckons to you at this time. It's comfortable. Salix, is that where you're headed? I imagine that's where the director wants to go. Yeah. Uh, on the way over, Salix would be like, I gave it two years. We're not back in two years from your trial or whatever hellacious thing awaits us wherever we're going. Then Will's just going to say we're dead. It's a good number. I like to think so. Blink of an eye, really. Well, for me anyway. So you make it to the keg. Beyond, there are a few goblins. Um, Still mostly humans there, and um, Aiden is working the counter. Uh, a, a look of uh, excitement, uh, a, fl a flash of happiness Oof. is his boring day at the tavern. Um, that ooh. rock is gonna hit, <laughs> yeah, Salix yeah, Sonic just a little bit. Like, oh, guys, who's gonna do this? <laughs> I nominate one of you, and Salix just kind of ushers. The director forward. Oh His God! Smile <laughs> fades before anybody needs to tell him. Yeah. Um, Ooh. Okay. Okay. Um. Whew. Hey, Aiden. <laughs> nice to see you, man. Sam <laughs> folds his arms. Just. Yeah. Oh. He's gonna kind of like saddle on up to the bar <laughs> and kind of crawl up on a bar stool. And uh, yeah, it's really good to be back. Um. Uh, this is it. This is, uh, this is it. And he's gonna <laughs> uh, look to Aiden. 
and then kind of look around. No. I'm sorry, Aiden. It was a very... (laughs) No. Words cannot describe the the selflessness and the courageousness of those we have lost beyond the border. And to really and truly remember Madaka and Reka would be to celebrate that the lives that they have saved is gonna kind of look around the bar. To truly, to truly remember their image, we must remember what they fought hard for. They fought hard for you, looking at the goblins, looking and, and, and for, for this bar and for Breach Hill. We cannot, there's time to mourn them, but there is also time to remember that we are alive and, that to, th- and to not rejoice in being here and to toast our friends. And he's gonna kind of pat the bar and be like, the toast to our friends that are gone. Monica and Rika, this is for you. And he'll take a shot. And... You've noticed halfway through your speech, uh, despite the cheering of goblins who are very confused goblins. and don't know what happened. Yay! Some of them don't really understand object permanence, so they don't know if, if anybody's really gone. Um, <laughs> uh, Aiden's left. He he went upstairs That's while you were <laughs> self, self-absorbed self in the King's speech. Um, yep. uh, he heads up to Monica's room, slowly, with his hands in his pockets, pockets of his vest, uh, one hand, so he's just sort of scratching at his blonde hair. Um, yeah, but he, he makes his way into the room Monica was staying in. Ruin would have followed. As you make your way up the stairs, um, the tall human uh, with the cane, he's packing her things up in a chest. He's, he's a opened up a nightstand and he's just hastily packing everything up. Uh, you know, I I saved her the room. I was supposed to uh, I put it all away. Um, it's bad for business, but I thought she was coming back. So um, actually, this is for you. He's gonna hand you a letter. What? A handwritten letter. Halfling handwriting, Monica's handwriting. It's addressed to you. Monica, would you read it? (sighs) Dear Rune, so if you're reading this, I guess I didn't make it out of the jungle. That kind of sucks to think about because, well, I had hopes and plans, but well, none of that matters now. First thing, will you please go to my room at the keg and there's a false bottom on the second drawer of my bureau. You'll find a stack of letters. You can read them if you want, but burn them as soon as possible. Second, if anyone comes about looking for Songbird or Daria Stone Mason, kill them on sight. Third, for the love of all that you hold dear, make sure you eat and sleep at regular intervals. Don't make me haunt you. Take care of yourself and keep an eye on Aldonis. He wants to be a guard for the Bumble Brashers. I love you, Rune, or whatever your name really is, but maybe like me, you changed it to become who you want to be. For what it's worth, I loved you, Modica, or Evane Redcask. Well, I'm dead, so I guess someone should know who I was, right? Dear gods, I hope you never get this letter. Uh, While the rune smirks, a tear does fall. Right. Well, Aiden. Yeah. 
Keep this room. I'm bringing her back. I have my word. She's dead? Not if I can help it. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> no, Aiden. I give you my word. The power of magic is at my beck and call. I will find it. I will find her soul, and I will put it back in her body, even if I have to recreate it on my own. I will bring her back. Okay. You keep this room safe. You keep this in running. It's yours. Yeah, it, it better be by now. Um, he, hand, he hands back the letter. You never gave this to me. When she returns, do you understand? Right. Right. All right. Now, I will go have a drink for our lost friend. Okay. And he, he'll right. head back down the stairs. Uh, he just seems frazzled. He's much taller than you and, and quite lanky. Um, he's probably only read about battles like that uh, and still doesn't know the details. Um, but I imagine the director is, is spilling... The, the juicy bits of the information uh, to the goblins. Oh, absolutely. He's down in the lobby. Right yeah. Me meanwhile, downstairs, uh, while the director is regaling them of stories, Salix literally yeah. just leans over the bar, grabs a bottle, and he's like... Salix knows where Monica has her, has her stash. Um, <laughs> Rune, do you, <clears throat> do you open the false bottom after Aiden leaves? Um... You notice it's there. The drawer is shallow. Yes, he does. Piles of letters. A stack. Handwritten. Like the one addressed to you. They're unsent. You can pour into those later. But um, He'll take until them. then, Salix. A hand snatches the bottle away from you. I was going to drink that. You're going to pay. It's, uh, it's Aiden. You know, and he just kind of like boops his nose. He's like, <laughs> if you weren't so cute, I'd murder you where you stand. Hmm. And he'll like throw like, he'll put like a gold on the counter. He's like, I'll give it back. And with one finger, he'll slide the drink back and then boop you on the nose again. <laughs> That's adorable. Uh, but he seems shaky. He, he's not okay. And, and sort of just putting on a brave face. Um, Salix will pour a drink, like grab a second cup and pour a drink and like kind of slide it to him. He's like, well, we should both drink because, well, who wants to be sober in a time like this? He'll, he'll lean back and drink it. So uh, we'll pan out on this night. I imagine it's spent um, just, just drinking and remembering some I, people. At one point, I want to um, I want to assume that Room gets drunk with the director and Salix and Salix drunkenly gets on the bar and is like, the director find <laughs> me a chicken. <laughs> the same one as last time, sir. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's wonderful. We all get tanked. Uh, the <laughs> director will actually, no, I'm okay. For, for, for at least uh, cinematic purposes, the director actually do, is more concerned with getting everything down that he remembers. So a lot of that night is going to be him saying, wait, just hold on a second. Hold on a second. I got it. <laughs> wait, where were you when this? Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. And and be able to get the flesh out the... the right beginnings of his story yeah <laughs> that is, yeah he's, he's actually back to him. i was getting shot in the back by an arrow at that point <laughs> okay great so like usual <laughs> getting shot 
Yeah. Well, I was absolutely destroying something on the back of an elephant. Got it. A hundred percent. There we go. What about you, uh, Aldonis? Oh yeah, you're not there. So I guess you're just um, enjoying the camp with the Akuje. As they um, yeah, I'm keeping guard bodies. on. on I'm keeping guard on the two graves. So like, I'll spend one day with with Reika's grave, and then I'll spend the other day with Mama's grave, and go mm. back and forth because these are my people. Yeah, um, the vultures thought that it was a battle you were going to lose. Um, the Cinder Claws wouldn't care if they went to pick off the dead, but the Akuje are far more aggressive. Um, they've been shooting them out of the sky. They managed to scare off the demonic vulture people that wish to feast on the corpses and uh, the Akuje plan to carry them out to sea, uh, which means soon there's going to be uh, a bit of an exodus out to the coast, actually, to deliver these bodies. Um, it's going to be tiresome and, and costly for them to actually do it, but they think it's worth it uh, in the circumstances and, and what it means with Gozre helping them win this war. Uh, yeah, that's really sad for Aldonis, and I'm sorry, but we're going to go back to Breach Hill yeah. where they're partying and losing their minds. Um, director. Yes. You wake up to the feeling of a strong breeze. I need you to make a reflex save for me. Ooh, okay. Okay. A sandy, chalky feeling underneath you. It's quite dry and your lips are chapped. You slip, manage to catch yourself as your eyes peel open. Um, you found yourself atop the battlements of uh, the Hell Knight Citadel. Citadel oh, Alteran. Um, you're oh, really hungover. Oh, no. Um, holding on with just one hand, the other hand holding the neck of a chicken <laughs> as it flails. <laughs> Um, Salix is also on the battlements, but he's he's just resting underneath. You are on the very top, like the Revlons. Um, oh God! You, you're hanging on. Uh, and you're running out of time. I cast fly <laughs> um, on myself, <laughs> not the chicken. <laughs> That'd be hilarious, though. Oh. The chicken goes flying away. I'm still hanging there, like oh God, wrong. Sh <laughs> Should have happened. <laughs> as as you swing up. Um, you can wake Salix. Um, throw the chicken at him. Can I throw the chicken at him? Yeah, do it. All right, range attack. <laughs> um, can I make an attack to light it on fire with the scorching hand? Are you awake, sir? Sir, I'm are not. you awake? <laughs> sir. <laughs> no, you awaken um, to the sensation of a chicken's feet scratching you in the face. Um, Something about that immediately informs you about what happened the night before um, and catches you up more or less to speed on the shenanigans. Um, you're cold because you are out sleeping um, on a roof all night. Um, and it's not a good feeling because your head is pounding. Um, you did it again. <laughs> we did it again. <laughs> mm. uh Daniel, honestly, this is much like us. Right, <laughs> this definitely. is honestly just like Alex and Daniel's story. <laughs> You're, yeah. Uh, man, uh, real look, cameo. Uh, looking, <laughs> looking around, uh, does he see anybody else up here? Yeah, there's a goblin who's uh, swearing at you in Draconic. Do you, do you see or something? He calls you Rune. Um, Yeah, you don't get it. Uh, all right. Yeah, he's holding he's holding a pike because he plays guard. Uh, the Citadel's sort of grown apart from you guys in a way because you've been away for so long. It's um, it's the Goblin Citadel first and foremost, at least in your absence. Uh, so when you visit, they sort of just anticipate some calamity or or maybe a favor. Um, he's just upset that people are getting drunk and passing out um, on his watch. Uh, and he starts poking at you with, with, with the soft side of his pike. Can I use intimidating glare on him? Yeah, you can. Yeah, definitely. That's a save for him, right? Yeah. I think it's a will save. What's the DC? I don't know. 
I don't use these things very often. Uh, fine. There's no way he's got a bonus to match with a level nine. Um, he just kind of just wide-eyed steps back a couple a couple paces. Salix will stand up like to his full height and stretch. I'm like, oh. Yeah, you hear the clanking sound of, of, of bottles just kind of rolling off of you. Just clink, 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 clink. There's the mess. Oh, right, right. There's trail mix too. You 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 eat a lot when you when you drink. And you're starting to notice a little bit of maybe a little bit of pudge going on. <laughs> oh, oh. Just oh. Look a little bit. Oh man. Look at a little crest falling. A little crest. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> that is yeah. <laughs> So Alex is like, oh, okay, well, I'm walking for the next week. <laughs> Got it. And he'll just kind of like push the director like out of there. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> like, all right, we have to find Rune because he knows where Rune, Rune will uh, float up. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Rising in the center. So the battlements, it's a bit, it's like a courtyard uh, with training grounds in the middle. Um, you're up on the top and he's just risen up to meet you. Wow, we can all fly. You can fly, I can fly, he can fly. We can all fly. This is great. This is excellent. <laughs> right. It's a, it's a great time. How are you so happy? I can honestly right say following the two of you last night was an adventure in and of itself. Ooh. I had no idea the two of you could do so much in the span of hours. Oh, right. Of course we could. I, I mean, I, of course we absolutely could. What exactly do you, was what exactly did we do? Just throwing that well, out there. I mean, there was there was harpy. A harpy. There was in fact the. Yeah. Wait, wait. Was that my Bob first wife's party? You went to. <laughs> oh wait, no. Oh. But ultimately, the two of you swore me to secrecy, so I really can't tell you. Oh, <laughs> sounds yeah. like us. That sounds like us. Sounds exactly okay. Okay. Are there just yeah. dead chickens littered across the citadel right now? They're not dead. No, we don't kill the chickens. <laughs> For what it's worth, we should probably get out of here before the farmer where you got these chickens finds you. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> Hide the chickens. Hide the chickens. Put them in the sack. He's gonna. He opens up his bag of holding. Put them in the sack. Oh, There's a lot more you have room no idea now. What, you do not know what happened to the donkey. There's. He's there's gonna look a... in the bag. Is it in there? No. Like, say, like, like, I've traveled a bunch, and he'll look at the director. A donkey? What can I say? I really like a good ass. You said that last night, too. Yeah, it's kind of uh, my thing. The, maybe I won't walk, and say, like, will just kind of stretch his wings and take off. Notice uh, this sunrise, the, the goblin keeping watch is just looking out on the horizon, the panorama, questioning all of his life decisions in the short six years of his long life as he listens to this and he's just if he if there were cigarettes he'd be smoking one right now <laughs> just thinking like big thoughts um because because of this um but with that you guys have had had your rest um for now hopefully uh the, your drinking and your escapades it could help you escape from the tragedy that had just occurred um and it seemed like Rune was indulging, partaking a little bit before you guys blacked out. So, I mean, maybe he's better. Maybe we're all healed up. R Rune walked Promise to the- Promise solved. Rune walked to the uh, the finish line as to where Salix and the director were, were sprinting. <laughs> yeah, or yeah, me, yeah. Something like that. they didn't even stop at the finish line. They just kept going. <laughs> just kept going. <laughs> no, we yeah. Ran, we ran someone else's race after that. It was, that. It was uh, a yeah. run, run forest run kind of moment. Um, he runs so now out of the stadium. You turned a 50 foot, you turned a 50 foot dash into like a marathon. <laughs> it's the way I do it. Three days required to return home. Uh, you've gathered so, supplies. In those three days. Right. Wherever we're in confined Salix. Do you want to know about Kellen now or later? This is before, this is as you're reaching Elseta's ring, the ring of portals, um, where you would travel through Hunter Gate. That would be a good spot to have this conversation. Salix is just like staring at the, at the gate that's open. Right, right. <clears throat> Let's hear it. Where is he at? All right, I know this is a bit dramatic, but uh, what I'm about to tell you 
as he looks at the gates around us. There's a, there's a chance we could part ways here. Right, right, right now. Yeah. Kellen. The deity that Kellen worships. Uh, deity of dreams, if my memory serves. Uh, deny us, then... At any rate. Um, because of uh, my personal escapades, I've been able to walk my dreams. Kellen met me there. I have, uh, given everything that's happened, some of the details of that dream are a bit hazy, but what I do know is that, as he points to that gate right there, I'm fairly certain that gate will lead to Kellen, or at least put you on the path to find him. But I don't know and I wouldn't blame you for trying, is whether that necklace will open that gate. Mm. So, if that's the choice you make to go through there, I won't blame you. All I ask is that you let me go through the other gate first. At the very least, I have to get back to Aldonis. This gate is a shrine to the goddess Desna. Her realm is that of dreams. You knew this about Kellen, but he was quiet um, when it came to, to his religion. Despite, I mean, operating a temple um, to the dreamer, he uh, never spoke much about her. Symbolism is often stars or butterflies. This, this archway uh, represents both. There's a, a strange glistening sound like wind chimes as you approach rune you notice now as you stand at alceta's ring on, on, on the, the basement of, of your headquarters um there are six portals one you, it's a lead one it's fully operational one destroyed there's a, a gaping hole where it would be and three others each one representing a different god of an ancient elven pantheon. One that survives to this day, actually, because you recognize Cataphys, Desna, um, the others, and a strange feeling. I want you to make a check for me. What kind? Arcana, maybe? What was that again? Arcana check. Arcana, all right. You start to feel yourself drift off um, into sleep. Suddenly you're tired again. Did you sleep much, Rune? I doubt it. But you can fight it if you'd like. Um, but this tiredness, and instead of your eyes fading out to blackness, it's a strange blue hue. Something else is happening here. Maybe a dream, but maybe a nightmare. Rune is sort of wavering back and forth. Hold on for one second. I think someone wants to talk to me. I'm just gonna, as he passes out. Can I make a save try to catch him? Yeah, absolutely. That's good because he would land on his head in, in this <laughs> the adventure would tile be over. floor. Taken out by tile floor. <laughs> Rune. Um, yeah, you get back up. Something <laughs> strange happened. Um, 
and, and you manage to shake it off. But uh, then you look behind you, Salix is holding you and you're snoring. You don't know if you used to snore. Maybe you snore all the time, but uh, at least it's not ter- terribly snore? loud. Not yet. You're you're asleep. Um, luckily, Salix caught you, and you look around. Everything's the same. You're in an ethereal state, except Dreamgate. It's open just a peak. Between you and Dreamgate, however, is Kellen, the elf. Is his hands on another visit, huh? Hello, Rune. I'd like to, um, I'd like to make a, uh, would it be a deception or perception check to determine if this is real, if this is Kellen or not? Perception. This was unexpected. You can't tell. But not unwelcome, Rune. You possess a power, a gift I didn't expect. This thing within you, Menoth, he taught you how to walk in nightmares. He gave it to you. You didn't have a choice, and I'm sorry, but now you possess a rare gift. Lucky me. Each of these gates can only be passed by special means. You must have learned that with Hunter Gate. I don't have the answers you seek, but I know Dream Gate is available to you. To just me? What to him to? You've brought them in before. Mm. I know you have. I was there. Uh, Now? All right. Uh, Rune will uh, walk over to the director first as a test case. And just start... uh, Whistling a lullaby in his ear. You start to feel real sleepy. Oh, just, God. <laughs> yeah, you're hungover. Everything's uh, turning, as I just need turning a, sideways. I need it. I need yeah. As he starts to walk and like, so it's like, try to like dive out to try and catch. I'm like, no. <laughs> Are you going to fight it? You're going to make a save? Um, I think he would he. Uh, yeah, we'll say he'll try. He'll try and save it. All right, make a save. Yeah, he did. He is hungover. He is hungover. However, he is still trying to stay awake to see what happens to Rune. If that makes any sense. He has his purpose. You succeed. You shake it off. Oh, Salix. Man, sorry. Or, well, actually, Rune, do you try to, try to get oh. Salix? So, uh, Rune will walk over to Salix and look at Kellen. I want you to know, if this works, you will be punched. I imagine you're right. And he'll wave his hand and vanish gracefully. Dirty pool. Shit. Um, Rune will start to whistle the same lullaby in, in uh, Salix's ear. Salix, you begin to get tired. Salix just kind of looks at the director. He's like, well, I guess this is what we get for fucking with chickens. He just like falls over on top of Rune. Wait. (laughs) No. (laughs) Salix, you're standing beside Rune. In a a strange twist of reality, you have the uh, the same realization. You're seeing your own body. I think maybe maybe you died of a hangover. Look Quite tragic, to, right? Look up to Rune. Look, uh, I didn't mean to fall into your lap like that. 
it's a compromising position, I know, but the director it's all right, I like you it. too. It's fine. Listen, do you mind trying to help me with the director? He was being pretty resistant. I, I got it. I got it. Uh, can Salix go and try to like put him in a chokehold <laughs> to try and like wrangle his ethereal spirit out of his body? <laughs> Astral projection to a chokehold. <laughs> yeah, you tried it, but you just moved right through. <laughs> this is horrible. Sorry, oh that's not going to work. All right. Um, should I give it one more go? Or Sure, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll help out where I can. Just whistle the tune. As we're going to try it one more time. Salix will help. Director. Oh God. And to not off again. <laughs> for Lord, for the sake of the story, I won't. <laughs> um, do you want me to roll and we'll, um, I don't know if he, <sighs> I'm just gonna say he takes it. He takes it. Yeah. Well, I guess if everybody's falling asleep, I guess it's time for me to go to sleep too. Okay, I got this. And you wake up. Blah. It is the dream gate after all, director. Oh, I just thought you all were really bad at hangovers. But no, I get this now. Okay, I get it. Enjoying the story so far? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, what, are we, yeah, what, what are we all doing here? We're all dreaming? Oh, look, oh, man. Oh, man. I'm sorry I fell on you guys like that. That's horrible. Oh, God, awful. Mm. Shame. It'd be really bad if somebody found us like that. Whoa. Just, that's it's so inevitable at this point. He purposely worst. fell pretty bad. I'm <laughs> going to say he purposely in. fell pretty, pretty bad. It's like, oh no, I'm no, getting sleepy. No, 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 exactly. No. Oh no. Oh. You hear a voice. <laughs> no. No. No, no, no. Salix, you recognize that voice. Uh, bugger. Calling out, maybe through the invisibility, through through the gate. It's not. No. 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 It's close to you, and then and then away from you, bouncing between the ears. You know that voice to be Kellen's. It's not safe. No. He oh. materializes, um, his eyes dripping with black blood. What is that? What is that? Looking over at Rune, um, your eye. The patch is gone, the tentacle is latched onto the floor, but this time it's forking out into a web and it's sort of just um, pulling at you to sort of make your head yank to the ground a bit. He got out. Felix is going to run to Kellen. No, no. Um, and then Kellen will just push you back with his hand. Um, you realize you're in a dream. The rules don't really apply here. And, and, and he wills it, and you do. You fly back to the opposite wall with a, a thud, but also uh, not a dramatic one. Um, you don't really have a physical form. I'm closing it. Rune is uh, grabbing at the tentacle, calling to um, Mirakai. No, it's, it's too late. I have to do this. I'm sorry, Rune. Find me from the other side. Yes. And then you just hear a scream, and then suddenly you're all awake again. Salix wakes up screaming, Kellen. Hunter name. Gate. Yeah, uh, you might charge over to the gate, and it's no longer chiming like that. It's been made mundane. Yeah. Rune, you're, uh, you're bleeding a little bit out of your eye, but everything's fine, and you have a splitting headache. Does, does Rune look up to Salix at this point? That's a good question. Sorry, Salix. Like, if you look up to him, uh, he's got both swords out. One's on fire, and one is just kind of, like, Pulsing. humming. Yep. He's like, I'm going to get inside your head right now, and I'm going to murder it. It doesn't work that way. That's a really weird threat. It doesn't work that Sorry. way. 
I don't blame you if you want to try, but it won't work that way. It'll just go to you. But like, with effort, put, put the swords away. And I'll just kind of like shakily put the, the pendant to the door and walk through. Which door? The hunter gate. The other, the dream gate wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, oh, because you have access to Hunter Gate. As you make your way through, Hunter Gate opens up. Rune, do you follow? Because the window will close. He uh, gathers his wits as uh, the raven form of Mirakai lands on his shoulder. Uh, he just looks to the raven. I need more practice. It was too close. You don't understand, Rune. This wasn't you. It was him. The Raven says. Um, just sort of falling, like weak, as if as if the bird had had been starved. He's escaped. To where? Look up, Hunter Gate. You have a strange, you hear not, not the sound you heard before, this, this abyss, this darkness, some old thing escaping into an old dimension. Oh, DJ's going to be pissed. Go get some rest, Mary Kay. Nods. <sighs> And fades out. Do you follow before the window? Yeah, we're gonna, wa we're gonna walk through. <laughs> the director will uh, have heard that, <laughs> having stayed back. He he hears all of that, but is it just kind of lets Rune go ahead of him, and and in that second where he's alone, he's like, "Holy shit! <laughs> whoa, <laughs> whoa! Okay, well that this just okay. All right, fine. You know." It's a good story. She went downhill so fast. It oh. did. It went down really fast. Re uh, whatever. Okay. And we'll go in after him. Uh, yeah. Potent, potent energy is coming at each other. So three days of travel rune. You don't feel very different. Your powers are still with you. You, you could cast the magic you were granted by this mysterious thing. But um, America, I will tell you that he's simply escaped. Um, she won't provide much more information. In fact, she gets a bit quiet. Um, Do you know where? He took Dreamgate. Rune, you just put a shark in a koi pond. Well, to be fair, I was asked to go there. That seems par for the course. All right. Shit. We'll figure this out. Well, we're going to have to. Most of just power... lop my head off. Uh, we'll get him first if it comes to it. quiet again. Three days will pass. You make it back to the camp with the Akuje. Aldonis comes bounding up and like is very happy to see all of you. Oh, Rune will give uh, Aldonis a good rub. Yeah. Scritches, all that jazz. Salix, as we begin a journey, it's going to take a few weeks to make it ashore, is there anything you'd like to say? The elephant people um, have already begun to head back over to the shore. Um, and the Akuje, most of them had to return to their family. There's only a, a small group left, including the Ketia. Anything you'd like to say to them before the party heads out in the morning? Uh, kind of look to them. The offer to 
go to Breach Hill is still on the table. We finally were able to make sure that you have this land as your own, but going forward, at least for the foreseeable future, you will be on your own. I do hope to um, be able to come back and visit the uh, this holy site of what was the, it was be Badrio Gozre Badario Gozre Badario and Gozre and uh, remember my friends and one day I do hope to be able to have a. A tree of that magnitude next to Breach Hill. Katya, you fought more bravely than anybody that I have seen in decades. You lead your people well. She'll walk up to you, yank three hairs off of your head, the long white, um, and wrap it around her finger before tying it in a knot, um, just a band of your platinum hair. She'll put a hand on your cheek and nod respectfully, as the warriors do, um, at least the Akuje, the Khalidi. Like, hopefully within two years, we'll be back. They look to her, like, dead in the eye, and he's like, I better see some real progress. No slacking now. She'll pull three hairs off of her head, longer than yours, and hand it to you. He'll repeat the gesture that she did. He'll tie him around his, his finger and mm. in a band. A moment of respect between elves, but otherwise they're quiet. They're grateful for what you've done, um, but they're nowhere near considering this um, a, a good moment for them. Right. Nevertheless, in the morning, you all head out, right? Now what we're going to do is begin about three weeks of downtime. There's some preparation. Director, you've been writing um, the first draft of your play. And I have to ask, um, what artistic liberties are you taking in telling the story? <laughs> well, he's the great the great issue for him is that how is he going to fit all of this like down into a concise like con consumable play? So um, he has kind of three. Uh, he's going to take liberties. Um, I think he is he's going to stay pretty close to the actual events. Um, he is going to really build up those that you know have fallen, especially Reika, especially Monica, obviously. Um, uh, of course, making himself look really good as well. <laughs> but he's he's very he's very concerned about the size of these plays. So I think he's actually going to try and make this more of a saga, so that he can also prolong the uh, the as he debuts these things because he want, he's thinking about, you know, how much money this can generate, but also more so about getting the story out. And he feels that it would be better to do a three-parter instead of just one long, horrible, you know, two and a half hour yeah. movie slash theater. <laughs> Few places ha have the patience for that kind of art. Um, and you have a feeling you're heading to one of them. Damn straight. Diedrich. Yeah. Uh, Rune, will you inform Diedrich of what's happened? Oh, yeah. Right. He will. 
Go ahead. Um, Upon our arriving, or at least shortly after getting uh, everything together um, at the shoreline, he will uh, walk up to Tedrick. Um, I have some news. Go ahead. He escaped. Who has escaped? You know her. You would be dead. No. Not if the escape meant through dreams. Torrent, his warriors, these heavily armored sea elves, they stand at the ready. Uh, as if Aldonis they, is right next to Rune and like... You'll see Salix very, very clearly in the back with his arms folded, just like... Rune takes a bit of a cautious stance, sort of preparing himself for murder, being murdered. Manoth, what I want you to understand is that this was my last attempt at mercy. I wanted to see a fair trial. I gave you a chance for the sake of this young man to say goodbye. And you blew it. You deceive me. He escaped through the dream gate. The what? He escaped through the dream gate. I told you. He got away in a dream. Found his way out. There's a, a lot chance of weird he's in Desna's realm. Happen there. in your dreams. Yeah, tell me about it. There is a chance he's in Desna's realm now. What am I supposed to do, Rune? That is a really good question. He can't survive without a vessel. Not for long. Yeah, and um, I think I might know who he'd gone to. Felix will begin to charge at Rune. <laughs> He's screaming insanely. Aldonis so, will like pounce in front of you and like pin you down. It's too late. You're uh you're pulled by three sea elves. Like you better from Rune. You swear to you, wizard, if you transferred your curse onto my fiance, I swear I will rain the heavens down upon you and destroy everything you love. He'll shake the seals off. Like, everybody, get on this goddamn boat before I burn it to the ground. Notice uh, a cellist warship has it's actually... In the water. It's in the water. Uh, yeah, it, it's coming closer, and there are rats. get on the boats first out. to get to the water. Um, right. Rune? Yeah. I take it this gentleman will do my justice for me. Oh, yeah. You better not be lying. I have no reason to. Listen, I left here. I could have run. I came back to you. I could have run. I told you what's going on. I could have run. And I'm still willing to follow you to Kentargo if you think that's the best route. But to be completely honest, I have a very close friend whose fiance is in great danger and it's my fault, which is par for the course. So I'm going to do everything I can to save them and get my other friend back. So you tell me how you want this to go. He can't take anybody else until you're dead. Part of him resides within you. Oh, that's good to know. It's something I've learned. It's helped me track him. But if you're with so... me. Yeah, let's I've go with him. you. 
How do you track him? He'll die without rune. So we wait in Cantargo. Until he comes back. And he will. Good to know. Aldonis is really curious and now like wants to like question and be like, can you smell him? Can you feel him? Can you hear him? I, like, I'm a good tracker. I am a good tracker. Let's move to the boat. The sea elves, you notice, they, they fall into the water. You're at the shore now. It's about midday. There's a Chelish warship. Um, on it, you notice the crest of uh, Cheliax has been painted over with a giant red rose. Um, but other than that, it's, it's an older looking ship. The sea elves, they can swim fine over to it. And the, the walls, the outside, the whole of the ship, it's designed so that you can scale it um, by hand as if you were to, to just swim over for it. Um, a modification for the torrent, which is the name of this army of sea elves. Dumbuge oh. is gonna head over to the water Oh God! All right. Uh, uh, am I swimming or am I flying? <laughs> and, and and the director will will like. Oh God, this is gonna be so hard. Uh, uh, he'll he'll kind of like pat Dembuge as he he'll kind of get down off of him, and and he'll look up at Dembuge and be like, "Listen, man, I." You know, I'm not very good at this type of thing. I'm really not good at, you know, this whole, uh, crap. Uh, uh, yeah. Are you breaking um, up with me? <laughs> Dembuge. What the heck, man? Listen, no, no. It's not you with me. No, I'm just kidding. It's not I that. I killed people, man. I, I, okay, listen. The Growlithon. I know. I, I, <laughs> I <laughs> looking at the one creature person that gets me. Dembuge, I love you more. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, he's gonna put his trunk in the water. Yeah. As the waves come in. Yeah. And just <laughs> splash you with salt water and sand. <laughs> all right. Okay. Try again. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Not as bad as my third right wife. Okay. <laughs> Listen, you can't fit on that boat. The boat's not going to be fun for you. I got to go. I got to oh, go. It, 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 you're going to get seasick. Have you ever been sea Have you ever been on a boat? Yes. Have you? Yes. Wow, I didn't think you would. When, when have you been on a boat? Okay, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not. <laughs> listen, man. Li okay, okay, listen. Aside from all the, the, the other stuff, um, uh, I want, okay, I will come back. I have some book sales I have to do over here. Like, it's not going to be, like, I'm definitely coming back. But you, man, you're going to be so famous. You're going to be so famous when I get my plays out. Uh, yeah, you're going to yeah. be, dude, every, every elephant, every elephant lady in, in your village, absolutely going to be wanting you. You're oh, going to wow. be yeah, so so elite you're gonna be amazing i'll come back i'm gonna come back like don't don't forget about i will come back um but i need to go do some i gotta do some work and you know this is all boring stuff this is all the stuff that you don't want this is uh who wants to deal with you know politicians who wants to deal with society boring all right all right whatever <sighs> that's fine then boogie then well. boogie then boogie come here come here come here i'm gonna join past with him Okay. <laughs> I'm joining paths with this elephant. <laughs> um. <laughs> My you know, team. that's a weird name. What? Did... How come you never shared your name? He looks at you uh, as, as you, you exchange some, some information, some signature of the lives that you've lived. Uh, and you notice he's uh, more or less putting on a show. He he pretends to be dumb. He knows what you're doing, uh, and he knew you were, he was going to tell you that he was. Ba you're basically going to leave anyway. Um, he's he's had a long life 
a long career of people uh, employing him to mess stuff up and then just sort of kind of oh god because he's too big to fit through doors <laughs> oh my god you're one of those people oh god my heart <laughs> and he's sort of just playing he's just trying to make you feel bad on purpose mm -hmm. oh, whatever have fun <sighs> it sinks <laughs> it sinks nope <laughs> it sinks and as he's just he just starts walking away and he notices a small tree off the sandy path and he just says tree and he just knocks it down with his hand <laughs> oh god this breaks my heart wait wait no no <laughs> he's going to um yeah he's going to um <laughs> dambuge i'll come back <laughs> i'll come back i promise he just waves with his trunk <laughs> what is it afraid of me, bitch. <laughs> Sal Forever. <laughs> Sal Sal Salix is standing on the beach, just that was that was pretty touching, actually. Yeah, that the was beautiful. The director falls on his knees and just is like, <laughs> mm. the, the things we lose in war, the things we lose in war. Tilly walks by and uh, like, just flicks him with the forehead and be like, he's not dead, you <laughs> You don't know what the life he's like. I just joined path paths with him. That's, you know, I know everything now. Ah, boy, okay, let's go. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's go. I'm done. <laughs> he's so gonna cast he's gonna cast fly and go over the boat. <laughs> right. Well that was interesting. Did Monica cry when she had to leave me behind sometimes? Uh, we're, we're gonna look it out, Adonis. Salix, your amulet glows. Adonis, uh, she cried any time you, you were gone. Okay. I feel better, I think. <laughs> Salix kind of scowls at Rune and just takes off towards the boat, flying. This is going to be a great boat trip. Hmm. You have me. That I do, Aldonis. Thank you. Handsome. you. Ready for a little flight? We're flying? We can, yeah. <gasps> I've never flown before. Uh, all right, well, don't go crazy now. Just keep focused. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm. And uh, Rune will fly the two of them. He will howl in excitement. <laughs> Director, first thing you notice as you fly, you're the first one to enter the ship, other than the elves. Um, uh, a shorter man with a red coat. He's middle-aged. He's got a beard. It's uh, it was blonde at some time, and now it's looking uh, pretty salty. Um, and he wears a tricorn hat. He has a mustache. He smiles. The garden toys fly now. You notice oh. it's a captain of a ship. <laughs> uh, permission to come on board, sir. <laughs> He's gonna land before he even says the permission granted. <laughs> coming out, um, yeah, another man with long black hair, pale yellowish skin, arm in a brace. Um, but it's actually, it's elegant. You, you would think uh, maybe he'd have healed it by now, um, but his, his arm is sh shriveled, withered away by, by some, some injury or, or magic long ago. Um, he has a, a dagger on his sheath, um, and he sort of locks arms with the captain. Hello, hello. Uh, I am the director. I will be a part of this uh, voyage as well, as he kind of looks over towards Rune and Salix, who are flying over. Um, pleased to meet you, sirs. Captain, and he'll bow and be courteous. Mm. 
The name's Crassius Sargata. Now you Does save that... yourself. Does that name ring a bell? Can I do You can make a check. Yeah, I'll make a check. Do you have a knowledge check? I have a knowledge would... check. Hmm. Rune. For this. Uh, yeah, as, uh, as Rune's flying over, does the, the rose look familiar? Yeah, it's a symbol of uh, Milani. Oh. Minor deity. Yeah. One you've learned a lot about lately, actually. Um, in fact, even the name rings a bell. As, you, as, you, as you're coming aboard, you, you hear the name Crassius Sargata. You can make a knowledge check. Politics or history. Whichever one you like. Hmm. Right. Crassius um, un unlocks his arm, um, grabs a citrus fruit on top of a barrel, takes a bite. Um, and then pulls out a sword and points it at the warg. Oh, we'll have uh, none of that now. Yeah, we won't. Salix lands behind him. He's like, yeah, we won't. He looks at Diedrich and back to the warg. I'll need an explanation. Absolutely. Absolutely. We should give a, a, a explanation. He'll kind of look to Rune and, and then look to... Uh, Aldonis is my ally and friend. So the explanation you need. Hmm. Well, if it leads to a mutiny, it's on you. That seems fair. We shouldn't be worried about that. That's not going to happen. No, no. Aldonis is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful dog. He is very well-mannered. Wonderful. Warg. Warg. Dog. Thank you. Sorry. Um, mm. Yeah. I'm going to roll diplomacy. Now, <laughs> Crassius uh, leans over towards the gnome, the director. Yes. A gnome twice your size is half a bite. To a warg. They're bad luck. This one isn't. This one's great luck. We you should have seen what we just came from. Trust me, if this if this warg was bad luck, it would have we would have known by now. This is one of the best luck charms I have had my mm. entire life. Why would I eat the director? He's well spoken. Crassius looks uh, looks to the rest, referring to the gnome um, as if it were a, a trinket of sorts. You're a storyteller. <laughs> oh, this is the storyteller. Very well. Well, I'm proper bored. And he's going to kick open the door to the captain's quarters inside. Um, instead of a window panoramic of, of the back of the ship, it's, um, it's just liquor and food. Um, regale us. Oh, my friends, my friends, I have many stories to tell, hours worth. Let us begin. Let us set off, and I shall tell you great adventures. After I get some drinks. Wonderful. Don't ever look at my husband like that again, he says to the gnome, who has never looked at his husband. He <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, ushers him in, um, and, and the three of you go in. Director, I'm sure. Arun doesn't follow talk their ear off about the, the oh, stories absolutely. that your friends have all heard already. Exactly, um, yeah. Aldonis. Yep. I stand next to Rune and like, yeah. don't leave his side. You barely got legs. Um, and all of a sudden you realize that you need sea legs that you don't have. Yeah. Um, it starts yep. swaying. I'm going to need a uh, fortitude check actually from everybody as this ship heads off. Can the copious amounts of alcohol I have help with this reflex save? Um, no, but it's already made it worse. <laughs> okay, good. Um, Rune has failed. Aldonis has failed. Salix has succeeded. Uh, Director has failed. Um, Damn it. That's going to play into some penalties on downtime checks. You guys, 
uh, have been throwing up off the side of the ship. You wasted probably a good feast in the beginning, um, turtle stew and whatnot. Aldonis and Thrun, where do you think you fit in in a ship? Nowhere. It's a bit different. It has a crew that's pretty small. It's supplemented by the sea elves, um, mostly the warriors, but they, they know how to maintain a ship. Um, oftentimes, the, the spry ones, they'll actually dive below. You're getting a lot of your food from fresh sources as they make their way under to hunt, and they can actually catch up with the ship and climb aboard again. Um, the, your sun, you're getting sunburnt. Um, you, I don't know if you guys have been out in the open sea like this before. Um, Rune, you know a farmer's tan, but this is a bit different. You realize yeah. pretty pretty early on that you have to uh, head below below deck to uh, to avoid it because it is unrelenting outside, and there haven't been clouds yet. Aldonis, um, it's pretty miserable for you. Not gonna lie, um, but you're coping. Um, I'm How do you a good feel Lord. right now? Because the last couple of weeks has changed everything for that yeah. ward. Who kind of hasn't known um, home anyway. Uh, to just take a second and think, I'm in the middle of the ocean, um, surrounded by a lot of people I don't know, uh, and the people I would confide in are not here. Um. It's really lonely and um, in his deep guttural voice, he'll just, he'll sometimes like hum um, the lullaby that, that Monica used to sing to him, especially like when he's, when he's trying to sleep um, and when he can't see Rune. So, uh, um, yeah, he doesn't know how to handle this sorrow, but he does know that if he attacks people, that that's a bad thing. Yep. Because we're not we're not in war right now, and and he doesn't want his friends to get hurt. Um. He does kind of feel an itch, and so he'll spend time, um, looking over the side and seeing if he can see something, and like he might try to jump in and, and like kill a marlin or something that gets close to the ship just to be like, I'm useful. Uh, in a moment of, of uh, excitement. Yeah. And um... okay, I need you to make me a save. Okay. As you fall into the water. Jump. I jump into the water. Uh, okay. <laughs> Rune might see it as a fall, but where is Rune right now? Uh, Have you been so babysitting be fair, Aldonis? Um, knowing that Aldonis um, is a fish out of water, so to speak, um, he won't travel too far from the warg uh, throughout the trip, regardless of any un discomfort that Rune might get yeah, I being mean, on the top deck. Aldonis has natural sunblock. He's got his fur. But... Yeah. So, um, so yeah, uh, Rune keeps an eye on Aldonis, if for no other reason than uh, to make sure that no one bothers the warg. Well, uh, uh, the big pup decided to, uh, in a moment's notice, pursue something Our off the side of a warship, um, moving faster than you know it could swim, for a fact. Immediately, you might understand that this is not a fight it, it could win. Um, the sea elves hopefully have s seen something, but they went down a while ago and haven't come back up yet. So maybe they're exploring something else. Um, what do you do? How far away is Aldonis from the moment I see 20 feet. the warg jump? 20 feet. Uh, using reach, cast okay. fly. Okay. Well, I'm going to cast fly at 30 feet. Aldonis, you begin to struggle. Um, the water takes you much faster than you thought. This isn't a pond. This is not rainwater. Uh, this is a torrent. Looking around, this thing is 30 times faster than you. Uh, 
elves in an arena you're not familiar with. Um, and this, the elves are nowhere to be found. Um, you didn't realize they were diving that deep. Um, and suddenly you feel the weight is lifted, but you still can't breathe. What do you do? You know you, uh, you've been given uh, the spell fly because you feel that, that zero gravity feeling in your stomach, some, some buoyancy pulling you up. Um, uh, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't really do anything. So I just try to go for the surface, I guess. Let me know if I can see the poor Borg and how far away it is. As you move um, to the, the edge of the ship, you see, um, yeah, you can make out the Borg. Far, far back, um, bobbing in the surface, um, and then slowly just kind of bouncing along, skipping along the surface of the water. How far? Uh, the, the ship's moving faster uh, than he is so far, but he's about 30 feet. He, he's closing the gap. He's starting to, to catch up. Um, grabbing his staff, casting his spell as he's running down the the deck towards the back, the rear of the ship. Um, make a perception check for me. No, make a reflex save for me. Excellent. Um, you were, you, you had tunnel vision. You didn't realize. Um, sail turns, large piece of wood comes swinging and you managed to roll out of the way and keep your focus. Um, all you need to do is make it up the stairs to see at the very end. Um, you do do your thing with the staff. Uh, so he, uh, wrapping his fingers around the staff, uh, begins to light up with arcane symbols as he taps it onto the wood and points it at Eldonis as uh, a spectral, almost ethereal like hand reaches out as he uses a uh, telekinetic hall to lift Aldonis out of the water and act as a tether to pull, pull Aldonis back. Excellent. Aldonis, you're drawn back in. You don't know how much of it was you and how much of it was Rune, um, but you know you almost died and you collapse as soon as there's- Very sulky boy. Under, underneath you. Fur is, is wet, and you sort of lay there above ab above the captain's quarters, part of the ship. I shake it off. And Rune will use press the press the digitation to help dry Aldonis off. Are you bored, Aldonis? I almost had it. You did good. Don't jump over the ship again. What am I supposed to do? I hunt. Yeah, hmm. you do. Patience. I need you to learn some patience on this trip. I'm not useful. I don't like oh. it. I beg to differ, Aldonis. You're very useful to me. How? You remind me of her. Madika? Yeah. How? You're connected to her. You're connected to her. Not like you are. You mean with my eye? And just being you. Oh. I don't understand. I know. But you are useful. I promise. How long are we still on this ship? Uh, longer than you'll want to be, I assure you. Below deck. Salix. You're 
alone. You've had a decent amount of alone time. Um, during the day, director just sort of abandons his friends to tell stories um, because he's already told you the t stories five times. So now he's telling somebody else the stories five times. Um, you have time alone in a way that you actually kind of hadn't had in a while. Um, do you pray? And if you do, do you pray to two gods? He does. Mm. He will very purposely do uh, some rituals that Reka had showed him. Um, just in kind of like memorial to goes right because for one they're on the sea, like and yeah. uh, then he would um, like just thank goes right for the the power and you know ask for them to look over Reka wherever they have taken her and then. Um, He'll spend some time praying to, uh, I can never pronounce the name. Regathiel. Regathiel. Um, he's great. To, he'll, he'll be praying to them in a different, different kind of way. Uh, yeah. he'll thank them for, or think for the, uh, honoring them with blessings. Or honoring him with a blessing, uh, but he'll he'll say that uh, Kellen is in danger and he like he needs help and he's not sure how to do that. So, right, especially while he's on a boat traveling. So he's just I guess yeah utilizing the the prayer as a um, a way to commune with a god that might know what's up or might not. You never know. Strangely enough, um, this ship has been decked out lavishly. Ship, warships don't look anything like this. Um, the fact that you could take a, a full breath without passing out it, it is one thing, but um, yeah, I mean, these bathrooms have mirrors. They're, it's nice in here. Um, as you look in the mirror, there's a bathroom. In this room, you see an angel behind you. Dark skin, orange wings, glowing eyes, with the voice you remember on the day of the battle. He says, hello. Um, so let's just kind of bow his head and not look. We've heard your prayers. He did not listen. You had not lost enough. But now you have. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, what do I, what, what do I do now? Regathiel does not guide. But he'll help you. This angel produces um, a sharp knife. It's short. And he hands it to you. Oh, uh, kind of hesitantly, Salix would take it. He doesn't guide, but he empowers. Mm -hmm. Kind of looks at him in questioningly. No claws. He doesn't guide. But if you would like, you can leave this all behind and join the fight in hell. Regathiel's army. He could use you. Like, kind of like realization washes over Selig's face, and he's like, I'm 
Right. I got it. Kind of like flip the di- like spin the dagger over in his hand and hand it back to him. He's like, I have things I need to take care of here. Hmm. Thanks for the offer, though. Salix looks down at both of your arms. The swords at your sheaths, um, leaning on the wall. Twice blessed. And thrice dead. You look at that. Would you? And he vanishes. The celestial glistening fades away. Good to know. Walking by the doors, he'll pick up his sword and uh, he'll find a place on on deck where I guess he'll spend the majority of the rest of his time, like in, either between prayer or that. Um, he he's uh, he's practicing. He's going through forms of uh, different like po- martial art poses, like calisthenics, things like that, staying limber and um, working out while training. The, yeah. Two weapons. Now, this would just be a, a, above deck? Above deck in the sun. At a high place. Mm-hmm. Right. Gazing up from, um, from just below, you're standing above the captain's quarters. Um, this, is, this is days later now. Um, the small cracks between the planks, because the ship isn't built very tightly at the deck. Crassius is laying on his desk with his hands behind his head, watching Salix train. Each 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 thundering step, uh, as some dust falls through. Uh, Crassius sort of looks over at Director, who's got um, a, basically a bean bag in the corner, um, empty bottles. Crassius says, "He really do all of that." The director yes. will kind of the stories. Director will kind of like look at the drink and 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 you know kind of look around to make sure that there was another uh, vacant wine bottle or whatever and and go to reach for it and be like, oh him, oh yeah no no seriously everything, everything Oof. absolutely. Aldonis will join in in the trainings with with uh, um, Salix and like do lunges at him and stuff. <laughs> that stomping p- produces enough dust to land in Crassius's <laughs> eye and, and he turns over. Like, oh, and off balance oh. <laughs> by the, the, the shaking water. Yeah, you should have seen. Oh, man, you should have seen. Yeah, no, it was it was uh, a lot of abs and a lot of of wings. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, do you have any more of that? Director, uh, yeah. you're about to vomit again. Um, <laughs> nope. Let's go. Oh, God. OK. <laughs> And he'll open it up, sort of blinding. Rune, I take it you're on the deck as well uh, to, to watch oh, over yeah. Aldonis, very least. What have you been doing in this downtime? Rune? Yeah. Um, he's been finding as quiet times as he can, usually uh, in the evenings at the twilight, uh, finding a spot where he can be in the open air and meditating, focusing on the power that he's learned and acquired, trying to find that next step, that one final piece to understand the pulse of the world, the primal energy that seems to flow through the the planet. Over time, he will take that spark that he finds, that well of power that he has learned to access, recalling the intricate patterns that he learned back at the academy, realizing how those equations and words allow that 
energy to focus into something. Remembering how Mirakai brought him a power, made him a deal with that power to a, to a place far outside these realms. And yet he was able to connect to it just the same, as dark an energy as it was. More recently, finding a connection to a deity he had never considered, a passing name, remembering his sister and how she would pray so fervently to Aristil. But Nethys is the one who proved himself to Rune, or Rune feels now he now needs to prove himself to Nethys. The last time you spoke to this higher power, it was in Menoth's realm. If you want to get closer to it, that might be the place to look. It's terrifying. Maybe you haven't visited your nightmares specifically, not since the incident. But one night, do you ever just uh, try it? Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay, so... What do you do to prepare for that, actually? Returning to, to the nightmare realm, wondering what Manoth has left behind. Huh. Um, he'll call both Corvus and Mirakai. Ask them to watch over him, and uh, specifically ask Mirakai to watch over him, and ask Corvus to keep an eye on Aldanus. And uh, he will allow Corvus to use whatever magics that he has to protect Aldonis if necessary. Right. Um, at which point Corvus will ruffle his feathers. Are we friends with the dog now? He smells like poop. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's salty poop. I don't like it. Have you ever smelled oh, salty poop? Corvus is a dick. <laughs> it's salty and poopy. Not a fan, but fine. Master, if that's what you wish. The ghost of Vodka the... is sneering. <laughs> Go watch over the salty, poopy dog. As Corvus just hops down and starts waddling out of the room rather than flying. Grumpy. Couldn't ask me to watch over your body, no. I gotta watch over the wet dog. I see how it is, master. Thank you. What are you doing, bird? Talking to myself, wet dog. Talking to myself. Do you okay. smell? Do you still smell like? Po oh God, you smell like fish. <laughs> they fed me fish. Don't breathe on me. Okay. <laughs> Corvus will just hop on his head. We're friends now, just so you know. That's fine. Yep, it better be. Don't jump off the boat. No, not doing that again. Good, I'll let you drown. <laughs> wow, Corvus. <laughs> I love this bird too. Rune. But yeah, uh, Rune will um just lie down in bed. Um, places a uh, fairly large tome uh, underneath it, locking it. And uh, he will remember the infinite manner that Mirakai had constructed, assuming now it is a Actually, let me correct that. He will uh, he will no longer assume that it is a safe haven, but at least a place that he can latch on to. Right. Now, um, it sort of feels, to give you a sense of scale, it, it feels like um, you were in 
a place you didn't understand because it was dark. Um, the light coming in and, and the understanding you have is the product of whatever was kept within breaking out. Um, this place uh, doesn't feel so mysterious anymore. Uh, but what seemed endless, you can you can conceptualize the boundaries, and as you awaken, what was in an infinite sprawl now just feels like a box. The columns don't disappear into nothing. There's a flat ceiling. The manor's the same, but it's not shifting from the corner of your eye. Do you move in? Yeah. The hallway isn't clever anymore. It's not pulling those tricks on you. It has a, a floor plan. Um, and, and it's always had a floor plan. It's off to the left in a desk drawer. That's where it's always been. But here, the difference is every time you used to look at it, it would be different. Sometimes there would be messages in it specifically to taunt you. Now it's just mundane. There's light coming in from the curtains. Look outside. And for once, for the first time in what feels like thousands of times you visited this manor, this place in your dreams, there's something on the other side. A city, you were told, is Cantargo. Somewhere in the Greens District. This is a noble's plaza. Is Marakai with you? Or did she stay awake? Uh, he would have asked her to join. Right. Here we this are. is where you used to live. No, this is where I used to work. Julia Banalis lived here. I protected her. The mayor. Yes, the mayor. I thought she was dead. For many years, Bars Lythroon's coup involved faking her death. But I didn't believe it. I did unspeakable things to find the truth. I think she... Is she still mayor now? You'd have to tell me. Uh, I can't quite remember in here. It's a bit fuzzy. Mm. You could make a knowledge check. Unrelated to the knowledge abilities you've unlocked recently, but um, I guess just an intelligence check to, to brute force. Uh, society? Sure, yeah. Um, you were. Your parents didn't want you involved in the politics that was the Ravenel uprising, but you remember a Nazrin Alamaxa, world famous, um, truly a, gl a global celebrity and those are rare you could ask a kobold from the Wang manga expanse about nazarin and, and they know who you're talking about practically she became the mayor um jillia sort of faded you, you don't remember what happened to her she, she became quite obscure um after everything was said and done the celebrity i remember hearing at the academy People are talking about how how on earth could Nazarin be mayor of Kentaro? It's a bit of a scandal, I guess, amongst the elite, but she could win anyone's heart. Was she that good? Did you know her? I did. Huh. Met her just before Menoff took me. Oh yeah, you did know her. She was excellent, wasn't she? She was. I'm sorry. It's okay. You're headed here, you know. Yeah, I know. She'll point to a building off in the distance. Most of this place, is, it's, it's got a feel to it, a bit of a charm. Coastal town, this building has no such charisma. It's like a small fortress. That's the house of truth and clarity. More than likely, that's where they'll try you. This, what you're seeing, this is dated. It could have changed. But do you see that hill with the temple? 
off in the distance, you see a massive temple. Um, Can't miss it. Temple of Asmodeus. It was the Temple of Aridon. Uh, Thrun tried to hold up there, I think. He did. He didn't survive the assault. It was a victory at great cost. But I'm sure you understand that by now. It's time I told you the true history. Oh, please do. The Silver Ravens, they wouldn't have been successful without a few key figures. Before I tell you this, I want you to tell me what you know about Cantaria. Cantaria? Your hometown. Why would you want to know about that? It's been protected. It's a small town, farming mainly, actually really only. What Menoth has gathered is that sil Silver Ravens have held up there following the collapse of Cheliax's hold what? on Ravenel. She's going to shut the curtain. It's time we talk. Salix, what are you doing right now? Uh, am I asleep? No, you're up. Um, it's nighttime though, right? Yeah, you never really adjusted to the way that the, the waves move. What's um, your downtime been like? Training a, a day lot in, day of, out? A lot of training. Uh, he's definitely got some sun now. Yeah. Uh, and all that uh, pudge from that trail mix is gone. I'm sure he knocked it out. The sea elves, um, elven, but as far as elves go, they don't look much anything like elves. Their ears are 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 webbed, um, as are their fingers. Some of them have gills. Their complexion range from purple to a deep blue. Some almost black. Um, and they have bright blue eyes. They're very suspicious. Even of other elves, they don't treat them like elves. They don't don their armor while they're below deck, but they wear it to swim. It's unusual. They say it helps them, though. They encourage you to drink turtle stew with them. Um, he would. Like he'd, he'll take time out and do it. They don't want to talk to you, but they understand that elven blood means something, so they make sure to include you. Even if um, they don't quite understand you. He'll thank them for it profusely, and then he'll ask if... Uh, he'll ask if he can borrow um, one of their daggers, because he doesn't keep one on him. pulls up um, a dagger, but it's actually um, an interesting one. It's wider than a dagger. It almost looks ceremonial, and there's a carving of an albatross on it. Um, and he brings his palms to your, to your temples, and he touches his forehead to yours. You've noticed they've been doing this. They touch foreheads, and you didn't realize that his forehead is actually quite soft, um, so it makes almost like a like a squish as it hits you, and you realize that's that's why they've been doing it. Their their skulls aren't super hard, at least in the front. Um, it must be some sort of sign of respect. But he hands you the dagger before doing it. Uh, Salix so will take it and uh, bow deeply, like in his own respectful way. Try not to, like, step on their own customs too much. Uh, and then he'll go back above deck. And, um... Yeah, he'll, uh... He'll take off into the air. Like, real high up. 
and uh, probably probably like a few he's just kind of coasting along with it like gliding with the ship above it and uh, probably like five minutes in it just starts raining silver hair down on the the deck of the boat and after a little while he lands he's like shaking his head and his hair is short Aldonis is covered in sil long silver hairs. Yeah, probably. Because he was at the prow of the uh, of the boat and just like watching. What is going on? <laughs> the director thinks he's dying. Like there's only oh god, there's hair everywhere. Oh god, <laughs> ah. I'm so itchy. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, when he originally grew the hair, it was in uh, honor of Regathio. And now, pretty much being, like, after pondering it, he's like, you offer me a dagger to kill myself to come help your cause. No. No more honor for you. And he uh, cut his hair. And um, now it's kind of, like, short and cropped on the sides and longerish and the back and top and um that he cleans the, the dagger quite nicely and makes sure he presents it back to the the elf who gave it to him elf is actually um above deck and he just reaches out his hand before you hand it to him as you walk over keep it The door to the captain's quarter swings open, expecting to see a figure. You train your eyes to the top of the door, but far below, uh, a head of, of green gnome hair just starts bobbing out. <laughs> sea legs are backwards, just working in the opposite direction. So instead of balancing, it's just double, like, whoa. What do you do with a drunken sailor? You get him to the edge, because I'm going to puke. <laughs> Go running off, about to puke. Oh man! Oh, what is all? What is on the deck? Was it hair? Who's, Notice, who's yeah, shedding? A, a trail of angel hair just how into the distance. <laughs> Salix, you're losing your hair. He's gonna kick it like with try and get to like the edge Train. of the ship. I told the salty dog not to shed. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> it wasn't me this time. The gimpy mutt can't help it apparently. Oh, well, somebody's losing their hair. I don't know. Does somebody, is somebody just, <laughs> wait, what is it? Um, does somebody need to eat an orange? <laughs> Who has scurvy? Wow. Why are you mean? I'm not. I'm about to puke. Not Blah. you. No. Bird brain. Bird brain is mean. Didn't not to mean. Be mean. You're just smelly. I'm truthful. Salix comes over to the director and is like, maybe, um... Oh swim... my dear God, what did you do with those lovely locks? Oh God, you have a mullet! <laughs> Where's he my said nest? Long, he's long in the front and short in the back, right? <laughs> it's not like super long. It's just kind of like... Nope, it's, it's a mullet. It, it's, it's not. Just, I know. It's, a mullet um, is long in the back. Short in the front. Yeah. Um, what did you do it's like with longer the on top, and he wasn't able to like get to the back properly, so it's just kind of uh, like a little bit furrier back there. I've seen this before. I've seen nest. this before. I've seen this before. Is everything okay with you and you and your fiance? I understand trouble. I get it. People do things with their hair, but oh god, hold on. So like, will pick the director up and immediately fly yeah, him but, real high into the air and be like, Ah, Jesus! <laughs> vomiting as as he comes yeah. up. Like, did you ever, did you dodging out of the way. Did you ever think your own story will end? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Put me back down. I get it. I get it. You get your whole boyfriend thing. I get it. I was kidding. Put me down. He'll drop him. Toss me. Fly. Me. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's no fun when you cancel out the threat like that. <laughs> He'll land and I'm like, oh, Corvus, I haven't seen you in such a long time. I forgot you liked my hair. 
it's gone now. You rat you, bastard. Would no, you it's make a not. Nest? It's on the deck. Yeah, you can make a nest out of it now. Oh my god, I can make a nest out of it. <laughs> You're welcome, bird. You're welcome. I think of good ideas. I have never been such a genius. <laughs> I say to myself that all the time. There's a gnome talking and he should shut up. Oh. See? He's mean. I'm not mean, you're smelly. <laughs> you're mean and not like rune. Salix? I don't do like you. Do you have wings? That's what these things are, yes. You're the most beautiful thing I have ever seen. Oh, I love you, Corvus. Did you hear that, Mutt? He loves me. <laughs> he also loves someone oh. he hasn't seen in years. Well, they can just run off and die. What do you do with a drunken sailor? Put him along those Director, you vomit somewhere. again. <laughs> I just try talking. A few months of this insufferable banter later. Rune... <laughs> Uh, interesting, actually. For the first time, he seems obsessed with sleep. Um, Yay! Monica is happy! His, his library <laughs> is not to be found awake. Um, and now he passes the time by, by ignoring his surroundings. You get to know Corvus pretty well, but um, that's more a curse than a blessing. Say, Alex, your hair even begins to grow out again. You might have to get a better cut this time. He uh, definitely asked one of the seals to help him out with it. <laughs> Not trusting anybody else. Can I cut it? No, Corvus. Trust you. Corvus, in fact, attempts to use Salix's hair to make a nest on Aldonis. Does Aldonis <laughs> allow that to happen? Um. Sure. Why not? He's got nothing better to do. It's a decent pet nest. Yeah. It's not, yeah, it's pretty lightweight. So it, it's silver and it's got patches of black under fur in it as well for like the downing. Yes. You know. It's not camouflaged. And for what it's worth, by about the third day, Corvus starts casting prestidigitation to make Eldana smell better. It's fine. Maybe people will talk Fair. to me. That's a public service. Oh. <laughs> Suddenly one day, um, Crassius and his husband, Markel, they seem quite happy. Coming up, you hear seagulls. Um, he hasn't been very captainly lately. He's left the crew to manage this vessel. Suddenly, storming up in his, in his full garb again with his tricorn hat you haven't seen him wear in a while. He seems 20 years younger as he lands a boot on top of a crate and pulls out a telescoping uh, glass. And then he looks down at the gnome. Draw a picture. Ah, uh, yes. Make uh, me look young. Yeah. Uh. Uh, we're all going to need to look young because we're about to set sail in Cantargo. You notice there's a lighthouse off, off in the distance. You can't, you can barely make it out because it's, it's midday and a glistening city breaking through the morning fog. Tall walls, the crew seem excited. I'm sure you all would be ecstatic at this point. You have, maybe it's been about a hundred days at sea. Um, Rune, left to your own devices, would you grow a beard? Uh, would you grow a beard? <gasps> would would Rune grow a beard? I think out of um, obsessive focus over learning as much as he can, yeah, yeah. You I wake you up would. to the sound of stomping as you have actually for the last... Uh, couple of months light streaking in that's usually your sign to wake up eat something and go back to bed but you hear the crew talk they're shouting they've reached the shore um that beard you were supposed to trim up before arriving uh never never got around to it 
um, and you're flowing a bit. Um, you probably don't have time to make yourself look pretty or fully wash your clothes, but uh, you're about to see civilization for the first time in quite a while. I think Aldonis would have asked how he cannot be attacked at, in this town. Mm. Go ahead and ask Rune that. Rune? Uh, Rune coming up, just sort of running his hands through his beard, sort of cleaning it up with some magic and at least freshening himself up. You look good. I like more I... fur. Uh, all right. How can I help you, Adonis? Uh, we're going to a city. Yeah. I don't think they like, it's not like Free Chill. It doesn't smell like Free Chill. That's because it's not. I don't think they like me. There are going to be people here that do not like you. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm okay with that. I don't, I don't know. Like, Kit, is there something we can do? Um, there is. I just, I don't know the magic yet. I can learn it though. The door uh, slides open hunching over slightly to fit in the frame. Diedrich holds his head. There are bags under his eyes. You do notice he he looks really strange in a way that you haven't understood until you've been in a building that is built for humans and he just doesn't fit in. Um, the structure was made to fit humanoids and he is basically crawling around um, in this giant suit and his face doesn't look right under a candlelight but he leans in. Salix, come on top, would you? Now comes the hard part. Yeah, he. he... Stomp it, fine. Um, and then he turns over to open Rune's Rune's door. Rune. I'm afraid yeah. this is the hard part. You have to put me in handcuffs now. Yeah, he'll open them. Listen, Aldonis. Mm. Whatever happens, if anyone pokes a fight at you, you run. You look. You look for Salix. All right? Promise. Okay. I promise. You'll be fine, Aldonis. But this is a city of misunderstandings. These people are afraid of what they don't understand. Because what they don't understand took away their freedom a long time ago. Abide by the laws and you'll be okay. We'll protect you. Keep your nose down, though. Okay. Come up top, say it, uh, Rune. Rune will head up top. So you make it, you're much closer now to the shore. Um, you have to meet uh, a bit of an awkward angle, the way the boats have to fit in. There's a giant lighthouse. It's, it's like a fortress um, off to the side. So you have to maneuver and, ab and abide by the traffic um, of ships coming in and out. Uh, when you make it, you guys land at a harbor. Now, Rune, Diedrich says, and he's patting uh, Crassius on the back like an old friend would. These people hate you. Word already got out before I headed out to find you. They think what's inside you is responsible for a great loss of life. We need you in Cantargo, but we need you somewhere safe. Where am I going? Comfortable prison. Fair enough. Who will protect him on his way there? He look, looks around. Um, 
dozens and dozens and dozens of sea elves. Um, you didn't really realize that there were this many on the ship because they did cycle out and in from the water. They kind of only came up to sleep. Some actually slept in sort of hammock structures on the side of the ship. Uh, but yeah, it's a small army of what's left. Um, and they sort of fill out this, the docks, the pier. You're at a busy harbor, people loading salt onto ships. Is Albatross still respected here? Of course. All right. Aldonis, Diedrich says. He pulls out a dagger. Aldonis backs up a little bit. But he's holding it by the blade, the handle pointed towards you. I don't have hands. No thumbs. And he like holds up one paw. <laughs> and this will do. And he puts a hand out to your shoulder and marks it with an etching, if you allow it, of an albatross. Curved neck. They're more afraid of that sigil than they are of you. Okay. You will be respected in this town. Thank you, Diedrich. Of course. Director, will you ride on my back? Uh, hold on, hold on. I got, I got some stuff. Um, okay. He's going to turn to the captain and his husband and kind of, uh, gentlemen, it's been wonderful these past several weeks. <laughs> I do admit I would not, this trip would not have been nearly as comfortable as it had been if I was not in your gracious uh, company. Uh, and he'll continue to kind of like give a little bit of a, a talk of, you know, goodwill and all that stuff. Uh, I... I do implore you to come see the wonderful play that will be going on as soon as possible. As soon as I can write it. Um, <laughs> uh, thank you. Okay, now I'll ride your back. He'll say, Mr. Director. <clears throat> yes. I thought I'd wait to extend this invitation. Be it bad luck to offer it early, but seeing as your friend's going away for quite some time. What if I told you my husband and I are visiting Vire? Ooh, <laughs> well, didn't expect that. Um, <laughs> A great many shows in the city of masks. It's your home. Uh, he's gonna look back at Rune and look at, 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 at Salix and at, uh, Oh, would you let him go? Born there, you wouldn't deprive him of that. Director can do what he wants. He's a free gnome. All right, I'll see you guys later. Yeah, absolutely, totally going with you. And he's gonna hop on board. He's gonna hop back on board. Well, you have a moment to say goodbye. You don't know how long Rune is going away, um, or if you'll ever see him again, though. So take this moment. He is bound in handcuffs. And there's an audience waiting to see him march off to a prison. He has a beard. He looks in a weird way more like a prisoner than you've ever seen a prisoner. Tattered robes, sunburnt skin, a long beard, and he's in shackles. Ready to be escorted. The director. Yes. Uh, I can honestly say your stories have been the highlight of my trip here. I appreciate that. Rune, my good friend, you know this is not the end. Your story has yet to be concluded. And I will, of course, be there when it is to write it down. Don't worry, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. Good luck. Uh, good no luck. doubt. Good my luck. story will be grand in your world. Felix. Taylor will like get on one knee down in front of the director and be like, 
What am I supposed to do about all these chickens? Talix, the necklace. Necklace. Can I offer you an egg in this trying time? The necklace flows. Sort of points at director. Not not pointed in the way, not like a compass, like take me here. It just sort of lifts up and points. Just. (laughs) I've never seen an angry necklace before today. He points out a finger and goes, boop, <laughs> to the necklace. Uh, it starts to charge this bright red, and it starts to shake, but then it calms itself down. <laughs> uh, Say, Alex, you're, you're, you're great. Stay well. Good luck. I do wish you the best. There are other fish in the sea. Remember that. But I wish you the best. Um, you know, come see my play. Buy my book. I'll see you later. Okay. And you go kind of turn around and just like start to go back towards the boat. Hmm. So as the boat sets off again, um, they waited until they ha- were loaded up before letting you go in case things got a little sour at the harbor. Um, Crassius just sort of stands there trying to look handsome. He's, he's, he's aged and he's got a bit of a gut, but he still thinks he's young. Well, did you draw me? Oh, I drew you. I definitely drew you. Excellent. Wait a second. Isn't he your debt? So you look out to see Rune Ravenswood headed off into a city, one that you're going to be hundreds of miles away from. You're supposed to spring him from jail in order to get your debt repaid. I know this. I have a plan. I have a plan. I never leave without a plan. Hmm. Is your, is your, how much are you going to pay me for this? He's going to ask about the drawing. Um, I'll pay you in fruit. And he kicks over a barrel of oranges. Um, you should know by now, I'm broke. Um, and then you sort of just head off north to the island of Vire. Rune, Aldonis, Salix, you're marching through the harbor. It's busy. Most people don't care, but some people stare at Rune like they've heard the talk of the town. Kintargo uh, has a great view to it. You can see most of the town. There's a massive hill. Um, You wouldn't know it unless you understood um, that it was called Temple Hill because it is covered in buildings. You can't even see the terrain. This place is sprawling. Um, Thousands and thousands of people here. And it's a free city. You hear bells, people, people hawking seafood, and the sound of seagulls um, ready to snag anything they can find. But you're headed for the gates. You're not here to enjoy, enjoy the harbor. Everything all right, Rune? Diedrich says. Well, uh, I'm waiting for the tomatoes to start throwing being thrown, really. They don't dishonor the albatross like that. Good to know. Hmm. You know, if you clear your name, we'd be happy to have you. Hear that, Rune? Somebody will be happy to have you. It's a rare occasion. Give me some time. You'll re, uh, rethink that offer. You make your way past the gates. You're in some old quarter of the city. Um, more eyes staring at you, some craftsmen. Um, but now more people are staring at Aldonis. People crouch a bit to glare at him, especially the, the people in the in the, in the mercenary guilds, they, they like a challenge. Maybe some of them have killed wargs before. Um, they're not afraid of a beast like that. As they're like, does Salix see some of them glaring at him? Yeah. Uh, Salix would like in- use intimidating glare back Use it. at them. Aldonis would, but he was told to keep his nose down, and he feels like that's the smart thing to do, since he's already done a really dumb thing. 
jumping off a ship. I mean, that was 100 days ago. Yeah, but still. It's fresh in his mind. Hmm. Yeah, I don't... I can't find... It's, uh, they make a DC check. I don't know what it is, though. I have to look it up later. Hey, back up. Keep menacingly. You notice he has a neck tattoo. What is it of? Ah. A feather. A green feather and a talon. They look at you. Two of them start talking to each other after you leave. They have matching tattoos, both green, a feather crossed with a talon, shaking their head. You arrive at the House of Truth and Clarity, a large building. It's legalistic. It's designed to look intimidating. Right there this guy, way. Spot on. Does she still talk to you? Oh, yeah. At least you're not alone. Neither are you. You enter marble floors. This place is very official. Um, people going about their business. Um, guards stationed all about. Lead us to the holding cell, Diedrich says. The guards with pikes. Usher you in. Diedrich says, I wish to speak to him alone. As you walk into a room with a chair, it's quite dark, so he lights a torch. The guards file out. Aldonis, Salix, do you? No. Mm -mm. Diedrich turns to Salix. This is in your interest. To leave. Fine. Aldonis, go. He gives Rune one last look and nods and then follows Salix. A little silver nest right on his small of his back. So it's kind of going do, 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 <laughs> as, he's, as he goes out. Hmm. So Diedrich is in a room and he shuts the door Torchlight, the only thing illuminating this chamber. Rune, I want you to tell me what you think is going to happen next. And he uncuffs you at the feet and the hands. Oh, I think we're about to have a conversation. I'm on your side. You know this by now. Well, you're definitely a decent individual. I know that. This might be one of the safest places in the city. I can speak to you here. All right. Can you tell me what's wrong with you then? This is a free land. Kintargo, Ravenel, but it is being corrupted. There are few people you can trust, Rune. It's time to be a little bit deceptive. We're being watched. I understand you might know something about the Scarlet Triad. <laughs> uh, very little, really. Mm -hmm. um... Whatever you know about them, they're more powerful than that. It's good to know. They're interested in me for some reason. I know that. It all connects. Ways I don't understand yet, but I need your help. 
Oh, right. There's a mouse skitters between your feet. This place stinks. Detect magic. You're clever. Room. He picks up the mouse. I understand you're familiar with shape shifting. Yeah. How about you trade places with this mouse? If I do that, then I'm an escaped fugitive. Rune. You're not. I don't need you in prison, Rune. Menoth is gone. I need your help. It's not I me know where wants... he is. I know where he wants to go. He found out where Selk is. In Benjen. Touch the damn mouse. Rune will touch the mouse. You transform. You take on the shape of the mouse, slightly different. The mouse transforms into a human. First, a woman. Um, some of you don't recognize, probably nobody, but then soon after, looking identical to Rune. All right. I know a place in the city where you can be safe so we can plan. All of this, it only works because Menoth doesn't know where you are. Squeak, squeak. And he opens the cell door. Ugh, disgusting. And he, he just sort of drops the mouse on the ground. Um, don't, don't kill that. Not indoors. <sighs> All right. Does it smell like him? Does it no. smell like Rune? No? Okay. Very well. I'll see you later, Rune. And he shuts the cell as Rune Ravenswood nods his head, bound and tied to the chair. He'll be tried here. But this takes patience. Highly legal, legalistic. It's going to take time. What do we do until then? <laughs> Sailor's is like walking towards the door. Uh, well, I don't know about you, but uh, there looked like some people out there that wanted to throw down and, uh, well, I just had a hundred plus days on a boat and I'm feeling kind of cooped up. Say Can we go find something? He'll turn around. Yeah. Before you pick a fight with the River Talons, research them a bit. Find mm -hmm. it in here. In fact, Rune was good at research. Make yourselves comfortable. It's going to be some time. If a dog, if a work could roll his eyes, that's what Aldonis would do because he is tired of waiting. The next few months, if you're tired of waiting, are going to be agonizing. You're given very few details. And in a town without any inns, it's hard to uh, find a lot of connections. If you don't have those in connections, you don't know um, what to do, who to see. So. With the money you have, which is quite a lot, you find a place to relax, um, waiting to hear news about Rune, and nothing comes. He's uh, being held, awaiting a trial. So, um, Felix would have done research on the River Talons or whatever. Um, but before that, he remembers hearing um, Kellen said saying find me on the other side 
and he's looking, trying to mm. find out uh, what the other side of the dream gate is. So, Salix, you've done this. You've played detective before. Um, Kintargo is a place about reputation. You need to build relationships with its inhabitants, and it's going to take quite a while. Many months. All right. Well, Aldonis let's... will look for whatever hunting group there is and um, be like, I hunt. Starting I help. out, <laughs> I guess Salix would um, try to think back on like stories that the director had told and like good ways to like increase like your reputation in a city at a rather uh, quick pace. So he would either go to the Bounty Hunter Guild, the, the uh, Hunter's Guild with Aldonis, or just the Mercenary Guild just to find work and um, we will have take, work. Take on lots of big jobs. <laughs> High profile stuff. <laughs> Interesting. Director, you found um you found home again. You have lived here and away from Vire. You've lived in Contargo for a bit, but but nothing's like Vire. Um I take it you might isolate yourself. And yeah. uh, stick to your writing for a bit. Yep, got some stuff Lay to low. do. Yep. Excellent. We're going to go over that because that's going to be months and months of downtime. The battle at Badariel is about 14 months ago now. It's strange to think about it. Um, the anniversary of Reka and Madoka's death came and went. But um, we're going to go over everything that happened off screen but I'm going to leave you with some bizarre news in the Kintargo newspaper. Salix, one morning you come out of the place you've been living, chasing your leads, probably working in a mercenary guild. Um, Rune Ravenswood's escaped. Somebody broke him out. Well, shit. That's where we're going to end off tonight. But we're all, so, we're not together. This is not okay. This party oh has been split my. geographically. <laughs> um, split to the four corners. This has been Pathfinder uh, second edition. If you like what you saw on screen with the way we've been using our images, our virtual tabletop with our dice, that's Fantasy Grounds. Go to fantasygrounds.com. Uh, if you're looking to game but not use a virtual tabletop, go to theonlysheet.com. Super cheap. It can manage your whole party, and it's really good for stuff like inventory, uh, theory crafting, planning forward. You can run it level one to level 20 um, and you get to keep it forever after one purchase. Um, Michael Gelfi gave us these wonderful ambient tracks and the song in the beginning was The Last Stand by Roth Narden. You can check them both out on Spotify or YouTube. Um, why don't we do our outros starting with Mr. Smith. Hello, hi Mr. Smith. I played a mouse eventually. Um, yes. Ian, thank you so much. Really appreciate the game tonight. That was awesome. Uh, the letter. The letter was solid. Mm. Yeah, the letter was solid. That was good. That's it for me. Daniel. Oh, uh, hi. I played Salix Lavendale today, uh, and I cut my hair. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's he's... He's having a go at life, and he's not having a good time. So looking forward to see where this plays out. Alex. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Alex. Um, I play the director, the uh, wonderful gnome bard, uh, who had his his personal emotional goodbye with Dembuge. Mm. Um, <laughs> he, is bro he was broken up. Um, but yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, check us out on our other games. Uh, I'll just leave it here for tonight. So good night. Spence? Hi, I'm Spence. I played the ghost of Modica and also Aldonis, the good boy hunter, not very good swimmer, uh, Warg. And uh, thank you so much to everybody who has been in our chat. Thank you for the follows. Um, we really appreciate them. Uh, if you have not followed our page you can do so uh right below us um 
you can subscribe and that helps sub uh, support the channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like, subscribe, share, let us uh, know how you think we're doing. Um, we are on Twitter, uh, Penny, is, is it Penny for Tail uh, LLC? Uh, give me a second, I'll let you know. <laughs> Penny for a Tail on Twitter. Yeah, Penny for a Tail Penny on Twitter. Penny underscore Tail. Mm. There you go, Penny underscore Tail. Um, you can find me personally at Resonant Moon. Um, Mr. Smith is at IamMrSmith.com. Uh, our beloved Reka, who will, uh, is not here, but I'm sure she'll come back uh, as a different character, hopefully in the near future, is at SavageSparrow.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, did I get everything? I think I got everything. I think you got it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, and I'm be Ian. here tomorrow. Yes, be here tomorrow for Static Dawn. Yeah. That is an exciting campaign. That's episode two. Uh, so we're just getting things started. I love that campaign so far. Um, Cyberpunk, it's great. I'm Ian. I am the GM. We are about a third of the way through this campaign. This is level nine. So we have so much more to come. Uh, if you join us next Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Daylight Time, because I think we're still in that. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go to sleep. Um, just stay hydrated, everybody. <laughs>